Welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. I'm David Gafford and today we're going to get under the hood of the Pit Boss 820D3 wood fired pellet grill. We'll walk through what it's about, who it's for, and show you all of the test cooks we've done on it coming up. The Pit Boss 820D3 is a part of our testing for the best pellet grill of 2022 that's coming up here on the channel. Now, if you're interested in seeing five different pellet grills competing against each other to see who's the best, then you'll wanna make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the notifications button turned on so you don't miss the video when it publishes this week. But today we're talking about the Pit Boss 820D3. Let's start by walking through the specifications of this unit. The Pit Boss 820 weighs a hefty 150 pounds and measures 56 and a half inches by 52 inches by 32 inches fully assembled. It has a 21 pound hopper capacity and I really like that the hopper includes a window so I can visibly monitor the pellet level without opening the hopper lid. Now the 820 also has the ability to quickly change the type of pellets that you have in the hopper. There's a small plate you unscrew on the back of the grill that allows you to dump pellets into a bucket for an easy flavor change. This unit offers about 850 square inches of cooking area total with about 593 square inches of space on the main grate level. Now there's eight and a half inches of vertical clearance if you take out the upper rack, which is more than enough room for whole chicken and turkey. It has a temperature range of 180 degrees on the low side to 500 degrees on the high side Fahrenheit. And temperature is selected by a main dial on the controller from smoke, 180, 200, 225, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 475, and high, which is set to 500 degrees. When it came to assembly for this unit, we had friends of the lab come and help us put this and the other units for the best pellet grill under $5.99 together, and the Pit Boss was built by our friend Kevin. He said that it was a pretty easy build. Now, it took about 90 minutes from in the box to ready to fire up. The only part where it was helpful to have another pair of hands was when we needed to turn the grill on its head to assemble the legs. One person to steady the grill while another puts each leg on was very helpful. When we talk about the build quality of a grill, we like to look at how sturdy it is, what it's made of, and how well it's put together. One of Pit Boss's slogans is bigger, hotter, heavier, and it rings true on this model. Using our digital caliper that we have here at the lab, we measured 2.7 millimeters for the door and 2.16 millimeters for the grill body. It's by far the heaviest metal on a grill and body that we've seen at this price range. The grill grates are porcelain coated metal and the main grates are heavy. They're wide enough to put a good sear on and the porcelain coating makes them incredibly easy to clean. There is a folding front shelf that comes standard with the 820 and that's pretty uncommon at this price point as well. The side shelf lifts off to transport food or for easy cleaning, and Melissa really enjoys the ability to bring it inside, fill it up for cooking, and just set it in place for the evening. Now there are two wheels on the unit and two stationary legs, which means it's incredibly sturdy and isn't going to move anywhere, even in the toughest of winds. The trade-off is that you have to lift a pretty heavy grill to maneuver it around the patio on just two wheels, but if you're just going to put it in place and leave it, there's not another grill I'm aware of that will stay put like this one. Pellet grills aren't exactly designed to keep all of the smoke in during a cook. There's an open smoke stack that doesn't have a baffle, so smoke can exit freely, but I still want to know that the grill I'm buying seals well enough that smoke isn't going to be exiting from every joint and seam. On the 820, we used a single sheet of paper to test the seal around the door to see if we could get between the metal. We couldn't get through the side of the door very easily, but the bottom of the door wasn't hard to get into. Now, no smoke has been visible coming out of the door except during startup though, so it's pretty airtight overall. To my knowledge, the controller on this unit is not a PID controller, nor does it have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Now, that being said, there's something about a controller that's not PID with more inconsistent temperatures that makes really great barbecue. 
I found that the controllers that allow some temperature swing during a low and slow cook put the best bark and color on meat, and this is one of those controllers. So let me show you. We took a nine pound pork butt, which is a pork shoulder, seasoned it with a 50-50 salt and pepper mixture, and put it on the Pit Boss 820D3. We didn't open the lid for three hours, and then we simply spritzed the pork with water from a spray bottle every hour until the five and a half hour mark. At that point, here's what it looked like. It's taken on a beautiful mahogany color on the outside and was by far the best looking pork butt in our testing group of five grills. Now the same thing goes for our hot and fast test that we ran. We took a whole chicken and spatchcocked it by cutting out the backbone and laying it flat so it would cook evenly. We seasoned it with some Heath Riles apple rub, set the grill to 350 degrees, and here's what it looked like at the 90 minute mark. Beautiful color on the outside and moist and juicy on the inside. Now our testing wouldn't be complete without running a direct grilling test to see how the 820 can grill burgers or chicken, so we picked up some boneless skinless chicken thighs, seasoned them with Pit Boss Champion Chicken Rub, and put them on the grill. I wanted to test how the grill would do both on top of the open flame access door and on top of a set of aluminum grill grates with the raised rail system. The chicken directly over the fire pot got a lovely sear from the flames and the chicken on the grill grate system took on some lovely grill marks as well. Now when it comes to grilling, the open fire access is rather small on almost every pellet grill you'll come across because there's just a four to five inch cup of fire below to service the entire grilling surface. Now that's where I really like the grill grate system that runs 150 degrees hotter than the grates that come with the grill so I can grill across the entire grate, even on a pellet grill, and still get those grill marks that drive guests wild. Now I wanted to know how long it would take the pit boss to go from a cold grill to 250 degrees for a smoking session and the grill reached temperature in just 7 minutes and 55 seconds. When the grill starts up, our experience has been that it overshoots the set temperature by a good 50 to 80 degrees. It then settles back down to the set temperature after about 10 minutes, but it's important to note that you'll want to let the grill sit for 10 minutes after startup if you don't want a higher heat going into your cook. Now we tracked just how long the unit would run on four pounds of pellets, and we tracked this test using our ThermalWorks Signals thermometer. We took an air probe and placed it center grate, and another air probe within one inch of the grill's internal thermometer, and here's what we saw. You can track the overshoot in temperature during startup, as well as see that the grill has a bit of movement around the set temperature. We talked about this grill not having a PID controller, and this is what that looks like in a graphical form. But man, does it put some great looking color on meat with that temperature swing as an asset. The 820D3 comes with a five year limited warranty, and you can learn more by visiting the Pit Boss website. If you'd like to check the current price and see if there's a sale going on for the 820D3, click the link below in the description. We keep tabs on the sales going on in the barbecue world, and if there's a sale, our link will direct you to the lowest price we're aware of for this unit. Now also, your purchase through our link helps support our channel, and it doesn't cost you any extra. Now, if outdoor cooking is your thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. We put about three videos out per week of the best in outdoor cooking and outdoor living, and we'd love to have you join us as we review what's too good to pass up and what's just plain pass in outdoor cooking. We're on all the major social media channels from Instagram to Facebook to Twitter, TikTok, and right here on YouTube, and we'd love to have you join us. We pass on the sales and discounts that we know of in the barbecue world, as well as help you feel more confident in your ability to entertain outdoors. Our motto is that life is better together, and we're all about equipping you with the best gear, teaching you winning techniques paired with amazing recipes to make your backyard the only place to be all grilling season. We'd love to have you join us, so hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified when new videos are posted to help you raise your outdoor cooking game. I'm David from the Barbecue Lab, and I can't wait to see you next time as we dive into what's new in barbecue. We'll see you then.